Before the Thirty Years' War, Denmark-Norway was the dominant power in Scandinavia, and became incredibly rich thanks to tolls they extracted on ships passing through the Sound Jews. But during the war, they increased these tolls, angering the Swedes and the Dutch, who launched a surprise attack in 1643. Their combined navies crushed the Danes, and forced them into handing over a great deal of territory, and Swedish ships were now exempt from paying the toll. And as part of the Greater Thirty Years' War, Sweden took more land and became a major power within Europe. And just as the war was wrapping up, in Poland-Lithuania, Cossacks rose up in rebellion, and in 1654 they formed an alliance with Russia who invaded the east of Poland. The new King of Sweden, Charles X, hoped to exploit this, and he also invaded. Initially, he was successful and gained many allies amongst the local nobility, and conquered Warsaw and Krakow. But the Polish managed to reorganise, and Swedish atrocities caused more to join the fight against them. The Polish also signed a truce with Russia, and this freed the Tsar up to attack Swedish territory in the Baltic. So Sweden appealed to Brandenburg, the Cossacks, and Transylvania for help, with all parties agreeing to divide the Commonwealth up. This was initially quite successful, and Warsaw was retaken. But in Denmark, Frederick III saw his chance to restore Denmark-Norway's land and position in the region. He had already removed powerful members of the Danish Council of the Realm, like Sehested, and in April 1657 he got the remaining members to agree to fund mobilisation, and in early June he signed a manifesto justifying war. Charles, however, had, after retaking Warsaw, realised that there was very little to be achieved in Poland after they continued to resist. So this war with Denmark provided him an opportunity to leave while saving face, and he marched with over 8,000 men, south of Pomerania, and he reached Holstein in mid-July. From there, they stormed into Jutland, overwhelming the Danish defences. However, the small fort of Frederiksoda held off the Swedish from August. Meanwhile, the Dutch, looking to keep trade flowing in and out of Danzig, had helped Poland and fought against the Swedish at sea, and the weakened Swedish navy couldn't re-establish its dominance. Plus, Denmark had signed an alliance with the Commonwealth, and Brandenburg, Sweden's former ally, switched sides. The English, French and Dutch all tried to bring an end to the war, but Charles was emboldened when Frederick's order finally fell in October. However, without dominance at sea, he could not move his troops to attack Copenhagen. But then, in December, the temperature plummeted, and sections of the sea began to freeze, and Charles, with meteorologists, observed the weather. Finally, in late January, the temperature dropped so low that the ice hardened, and Charles gave the order to cross. Catching the Danes off guard, they managed to fight their way across to Funen, but lost many cavalrymen who fell under the ice. Then Charles took his armies across the smaller islands. First, at night, they crossed to Lolland through two feet of sludge with few casualties. From there, they crossed to Falster and then made it to Zealand a few days later. The Danish public and government were thrown into panic, and they quickly sued for peace. In this peace treaty, Denmark surrendered a great deal of territory, including Scania and Bahelsen in Norway, giving the Swedish access to the Atlantic. Sweden, however, was still at war with the Commonwealth, but was not in a position to launch a counter-offensive in Poland. So Charles, hoping to end the Danish threat for good, attacked them again just a few months later, starting another Dano-Swedish war. 